Hey friends, my name is Sahil and this is my Personal Finance Academy. Of late, I have received multiple requests to create a video on best investment option for NRIs in India. Now there are many NRIs who want to eventually settle down in India and hence are looking for investment options in India. But there are a lot of queries in terms of what all options are available for NRIs to invest in India, what is the process to invest, how taxation work, etc. Now I have myself been an NRI for a few years before I quit my job and moved to India. So hopefully I'll try to answer this query. First of all, if you are an NRI and want to start investing in India, then you would need a bank account in India. So there are two categories of bank account that NRIs can open. First is NRE account and second is NRO account. Now what is the difference between these two accounts? NRE account is open when you want to move your foreign national earning into the Indian account. The benefit of this NRE account is that you don't have to pay any income tax on the money moved to the NRE account. It is because you have already paid the income tax in your respective country. So there is no tax on NRE account. Now if you have any earning source in India like your rental income or Indian salary component or any other income then you need to open an NRO account. This would be taxed as per income tax lab in India. So very simple, if you just want to move your foreign earning, then you need to open an NRE account and you don't need to pay any income tax on it. If you have earnings in India, then you need to open an NRO account and pay income tax on the same. Next, we'll categorize the investment in three parts, fixed income, mutual funds and direct equity. We'll quickly look at each investment category one by one. If you are someone who doesn't want any volatility with your money, then you can consider investing in a fixed return instrument. The most popular is of course your FD. Now this FD rate would vary from bank to bank as well as there are different FD rates for different duration and different investment amount. Shorter duration fetches lower interest rate and longer duration fetches higher interest rates. Currently on an average, the FD rates are in the range of 4.5% to 6.5%. For example, top banks like your SBI bank provide FD interest of 5 to 5.4% based on various investment duration. Then your HDFC bank and ICICI bank interest rate on FD is in the range of 4.9% to 5.5%. If you are looking for slightly higher interest rate, then you have options from mid-sized bank like RBL bank that provide interest in the range of 6 to 6.3%. Although some banks like DCB bank do provide high interest rate up to 6.5% but they have various balance lab and 6.5 is only when the balance is more than 50 lakh. But more or less the interest rates are in the range of 5 to 5.5%. Here I would suggest not to get too greedy for additional 0.5 to 1% return and avoid the cooperative and unknown banks. Always go with top banks even if you fetch slightly lower return. Although the interest rate on FDs are not looking attractive anymore. The only benefit is that the returns are tax free. Next option in the fixed income category is PPF. Currently the interest rate on PPF are 7.1% and it is completely tax free. Although the maximum investment in a year is 1.5 lakh. So that's a very small amount to invest and not suitable for someone who want to invest more than 1.5 lakh a year. Also, there's a lock-in period of 15 years from the date of opening the account. But this PPF account should be opened before you attain an NRA status. If you open the NRA account before moving out of India, then you can continue investing in PPF. But if you don't have a PPF account and you are an NRA, then you can't open a PPF account. Then there is one category of fixed investment that I would strongly recommend to avoid and that is your ULIPS and endowment plans where insurance companies give a fixed return on investment. I always say that never mix insurance and investment as such plans have lower returns as compared to mutual fund in similar category. Unfortunately, NRIs can't invest in sovereign gold bond. So in short, there are limited options in this fixed income category. Another very popular investment category is mutual funds. In fact, it is probably the best way to invest in a hassle-free way and create wealth for the long term. Now before you invest your money, you need to get your KYC done. This is a one-time process where you need to submit various documents like your PAN card, address proof and KYC form. 
You can reach out to zero commission mutual fund aggregators like your Grow, Kuvera, ET Money, Zeroza Coin and request them to get your KYC done. Alternately, you can reach out to the nearest Indian bank in your country to get your KYC done. Or whenever you visit India, you can get your KYC done by visiting the nearest bank or camp's office for the KYC. Please note that when you reach out to the bank for KYC, they would ask to invest in their mutual fund company. For example, if you reach out to SBI branch, they would ask to invest in SBI mutual fund. But that would be in a regular plan where you would end up paying commission to the SBI bank on top of the SBI mutual fund house fee. Hence, better to first reach out to Zero Commission Mutual Fund Aggregator and they will guide you with the KYC process. The bottom line is that you should invest in a direct mutual fund plan rather than the regular plan as regular plan charges additional commission from the mutual fund distributor. If required, you can get the KYC process done via banks and then once KYC is done, you can switch to Zero Commission Aggregators. Once your KYC is done, you can invest in direct mutual fund either using the mutual fund aggregator apps or you can also invest using the direct website or app of each fund house like your SBI mutual fund, XS mutual fund, SDFC mutual fund, etc. Although individual fund house apps or website could be a cumbersome process. If you are worried about the zero commission aggregator, then you can trust them. The advantage with zero commission mutual fund aggregator is that they give you an option to invest in all mutual funds via a single platform and you can track everything from a single platform. Please note that many mutual fund houses in India don't allow NRIs from USA and Canada to invest in their schemes because of the cumbersome compliance requirement under the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act. Although some fund houses allow investors based in USA and Canada to invest money in their scheme. For example, fund houses like your UTI, SBI, ICICI, Parag Parekh, Aditya Billa, LNT allow investors from USA and Canada to invest in their mutual fund. So if you're an NRI from US or Canada, then these options should be good enough for investment in the mutual funds. Rest all NRIs, there is no restriction. You can invest in all the fund houses. Now the next question is, which mutual fund to select for investment? First of all, here we are talking about equity based mutual fund and not debt mutual funds. So the best way is to make a diversified portfolio of 3-4 mutual funds that include 50% allocation in index fund like your Nifty 50 and Nifty Next 50. There are various options like your UTI Nifty 50 index fund, UTI Next 50 index fund, SBI Nifty index fund and so on. Then you can consider investing in the flexi cap category where the fund manager automatically divides the investment across your large cap, mid cap and small cap based on the market condition. Otherwise, you can choose one fund each from mid cap and small cap category. Remember that mid cap and small cap categories have higher return potential than large cap but also come at the cost of higher risk in terms of volatility. So break your money judiciously across mutual fund categories. As far as taxation is concerned, the taxation rules are similar for NRIs as that of a resident Indian. So if you invest for more than one year, then you have to pay 10% tax on profit above 1 lakh. For example, if you invested 5 lakh and after 10 years, your investment value became 15 lakh, then you have earned a profit of 10 lakh. Now there is no tax on profit up to 1 lakh, but 10% tax on remaining profit. So in this case, you will end up paying 10% tax on 9 lakh, that is rupees 90,000 as tax. Another very popular investment option is direct equity investment in the Indian stock market. This is a high risk and high reward category. On one side, if you choose quality stock, then it can generate multi-bagger returns, whereas a wrong stock can also result in high loss. In case you are confused between mutual fund and stocks, I have curated a video in the past explaining the pros and cons of each investment option. This equity investment is suitable for those who have a high risk taking appetite and looking to invest for the next 5, 10, 15 years. In order to invest in Indian stock market, NRIs would need to open a DMIT and trading account. This is over and above your NRE and NRO account which is the first step to invest in India. Then you need to do your one-time KYC either if you invest in mutual fund or in stock. But in mutual fund, you don't need a trading and DMIT account whereas you need a trading and DMIT account for stock trading. There are a lot of discount brokers like your Zerodha, Upstock, Grow, Angel Broking, 5 Pesa, etc. 
Then you have traditional brokers like your ICICI Direct, Kotex Security and so on. Now as far as stock investment is concerned, you have an entire universe of stocks for investment. I have created hundreds of videos analyzing various businesses and their future prospect. So it would not be possible for me to discuss in detail in this video. But at a high level, I want to share a few tips before you invest in the stock market. Please make sure that you only invest in fundamentally strong companies. A lot of people get carried away with market euphoria and also get influenced by their friends, colleagues and relatives. Then do not just invest in a stock based on great return in the past. A lot of people get too greedy and make the mistake of investing when the stock has already rallied a lot and invest at a very high valuation. So make sure you understand the valuation of the stock. Another important point to note before investing in stock market is to keep patience. Do not expect multi-packer return from the stock within a few months. Then always remember that stock market is very volatile. When the stock market falls, a lot of people are not able to handle the pressure and end up selling their stock. Now at high level, there are a lot of sectors and themes where you can consider investing. For example, technology is a big theme and there's a lot of great IT companies and technology companies in India that have a bright growth prospect. Then digital is the future and technology focused companies would surely create good wealth. Another theme is electric vehicle. Although it is a long journey for electric vehicles in India, but eventually electric vehicle would be the future. Then you have consumption, that is a big theme. Due to factors like your rising income level, rising spending level, increasing urbanization, people are spending a lot of money and consuming stuff right from your FMCG product to electronic products to data to food and the list goes on. There are great stocks in each category. Then you have another big theme of renewable energy. Then infrastructure is a big theme in India. Then healthcare would continue to do well in the future. Then government has a lot of focus on manufacturing sector in India. So you can keep these themes in mind while creating a stock portfolio and make sure that you nicely balance your portfolio across large, mid and small cap category. So in this video, we discuss the various investment options for NRIs in India. Broadly, there are three options, fixed income category, mutual funds and direct equity. Please note that we haven't considered real estate as we are only talking about the financial asset class. Otherwise, real estate is also a good option. Personally, I'm not in favor of investing in flats for renting purpose because the rental yield in India is very low. Otherwise, a land in your native place can be a good idea. Now, you can also break your money in various parts and invest a part in fixed income, mutual fund and stock. How much to allocate in which category would depend upon your risk appetite and financial goals. But before you invest your money, the best investment you can do is in your knowledge. So if you want to learn how mutual fund work or how to select the right stock, I curated a complete course on money management covering every important aspect of financial planning. You can explore my video course. I provided the link in the description. Hope you'll find this video useful. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care.